Hey guys, what's up? This is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I'm going to show you how you can use the multiband compressor to even out your audio when you're editing all of your videos in Adobe Premiere. Now I want to give a big shout out to Toon Tank for sponsoring this video. If you're a content creator like I am, you know you always need new music for your video productions. And sometimes finding the perfect music with the perfect license can really be difficult. If you haven't heard of Toon Tank yet, head over to ToonTank.com where you can filter the music by length, tempo, instrument, genre, mood. You can quickly find any type of music that you need and more importantly, you can download it and start using it instantly. And what's really cool about their service is they allow you to buy different licenses depending on what type of content you're producing. So if you're making a simple video for YouTube with your home movies, you can buy a very, very limited license for that. Or if you're lucky enough to be producing the next Marvel Comics movie, they have a license specifically for that as well. Now, one thing that I really appreciate is all of the artists on ToonTank.com are professionals and they have exclusive deals with this website. So you're not gonna find their music anywhere else. It's only gonna be found on ToonTank.com. Definitely check that out if you need more audio for your videos, but since we're talking about audio, let's get into this tutorial. So here's a clip from our last video, The Chronicles of Ritz Camera. We basically worked for Ritz Camera while it was going bankrupt and we share all of the dirty secrets. So hilarious series, definitely check that out if you've ever worked in retail. But let me show you what this audio sounds like straight out of the camera. So as I play this clip back, I want you guys to notice where the levels are falling on this audio file. So what many people don't know about F-Stoppers is Patrick and I met at a Ritz camera store. We were so Lee is about minus 18. We're both working there. Imagine that us like making film and like I'm at about minus 24. So we are definitely not even there, but even more than that throughout this entire interview, there's going to be points where we get really, really excited and we talk really loudly. And then there's other times where we talk really quietly and we just agree with each other. So I want to make sure that we can get that audio as loud as possible, but also have it even so that it's not clipping when we get loud and it's not inaudible as we talk really, really quietly. So one of the easiest tools in Premiere is to use the multi-band compressor. And if we click on this, traditionally I would just drag this onto the file and then you could click up here to multi-band compressor and you could do all of your edits right there. I'm gonna show you a better way to do this. We're gonna delete this off, and instead I'm gonna go over to our audio track mixer, and if you don't have your audio track mixer showing up, you can come up to Windows and make sure that that's turned on here. But right here on the left, there's this little triangle, and I never knew this existed for years, but if you click the triangle, it brings up this other mixing bay where you can insert your effects directly on a channel. So here we can go to amplitude and compression, we can find multiband compressor, and all of these effects are the same effects that you're gonna find in Adobe Audition, which is really cool. So let's click on our multiband compressor, and let's double click it. And for the love of God, Premiere, please fix this. We're in Premiere Pro CC 2019, and we still have to open our compressor, grab the corner, and open it so that we can see the whole thing. How is this still a bug? I don't know. But if we come up here to presets, you can see all of the different presets that they have in here. We're gonna use broadcast. Now I use classical master quite a bit, but in this case, we're gonna use broadcast because broadcast works really well with the microphones that we're using. I'm gonna close out of this. I'm gonna go back to our effects bay. I'm gonna add compression to channel two. Double click on that, drag this back out. And now let's add broadcast again. Now the reason that multiband compressor is so powerful is because it has these different crossovers and essentially you have four different compressors all in one. And why this is important is because you can essentially EQ your audio by adjusting the compression on each one of these spectrums. So the blue kind of represents your low bass end, the orange represents your low mids, and this is basically where most of the human voice is gonna fall. The green is the upper mids, and then the purple is your highest levels, where sometimes you can get those really poppy, s -y sounds, those sss. You're gonna be able to tame those separately with its own compression algorithm. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the details of how threshold and ratio and attack and release work because it's kinda complicated, and the whole point of this video is to make this as automated as possible. But what I wanna do is I wanna play back this audio and show you what it's actually doing to our sample sound clip. So I'm first gonna turn off the compressors by clicking on these FX buttons, and let's listen to Lee speak at the very beginning. So what many people don't know about F-Stoppers is Patrick and I met at a Ritz camera. Now if I turn this on, Lee is gonna be channel two. 
So what many people don't know about F-Stoppers is Patrick and I met at a Ritz camera store. We were both working there. Now, a couple things you're going to notice immediately is we took Lee's gain from all the way being down to, I think it was like minus 18, to now it's at about minus 6 or 9. So it's definitely increased the overall volume, but it's also brought up some of the quiet sounds and made them really loud, and some of those quiet sounds are the bass. And if you play this on a system that has a subwoofer like I have here, or if you're listening in your headphones, you might hear that rumbling sound. And for a podcast-style interview, we don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the blue setting, and I'm going to grab our crossover. I'm going to bring it down to about 100 hertz, and that's really where most people's subwoofer kind of comes into play in their sound system. And I'm going to go to gain, and I'm just going to set this to like minus 17 decibels, and that's going to allow me to lower the sub sound. And now if we play this back. So what many people don't know about F-Stoppers is Patrick and I met at a Ritz camera store we were so i don't hear that ultra low bass coming out of my sub anymore and this has fixed the problem and if you watch this video on youtube you probably heard all of that bass it's because we didn't put the right compressor on that video so you definitely want to get this right before you export and put your videos up on youtube like we did so now that we have the bass fixed the next thing i want to do is i want to make sure that our audio is hitting as high towards probably negative three as possible so what i can do is i can come up here to our output gain and i can just change this and bump up the decibels. Now, if I go all the way up to the top at 18 decibels and replay okay. this. So what many people don't know about F-Stoppers is Patrick and I met. You can see that even though we have a compressor on this clip, our audio is now peaking at zero and we definitely don't want that. So what we can do is we can turn on this limiter and a limiter is kind of like a compressor, but basically it's gonna squelch everything that hits a certain threshold or a certain level. And what I like to do is I like to change the margin to minus three. And what that's going to do is it's going to prevent any audio level from ever surpassing minus three decibels. Now you also want to make sure you turn on the brick wall limiter because that's going to make that a hard stop. And if we come back to the beginning and hit play. So what many people don't know about F-Stoppers is Patrick and I met at a Ritz camera and if you look at the audio levels, they're all hitting at minus three. Now, because this is so extreme, basically our whole audio clip is being boosted 18 decibels, and much of the top of those peaks are being squashed by this limiter, and so it's producing a sound that's not very flattering. So what we wanna do is we wanna leave the limiter on, we're gonna keep it at minus three, but I'm gonna change this output gain to something more reasonable. Maybe we need to bump it up by six decibels, and let's see now, so what many sounds. people don't know about F-Stoppers is Patrick and I met at a Ritz camera store. We were both working there. So you can see our levels are now bobbing between minus 9 and minus 3, which means all of our audio isn't being limited, only the highest peaks. Now I want to do this on my channel as well so that I get the increased volume, I get the compression that makes my voice sound really rich and full, and I want the, the effects of the limiter so that I'm not peaking either. So I'm going to turn back on my compressor. I'm going to double click, drag this back out. Let's turn on our limiter, make sure it's highlighted. We have the brick wall limiter turned on. We're going to turn our margin back to minus three. I'm going to set the gain for the lowest channel down to, I don't know, like minus 12. And then I'm going to set my crossover to about 100 hertz. And now the final thing I need to do is I need to bump up the audio on my channel because I was significantly quieter than Lee. I think we just recorded my microphone a little bit lower. So I'm going to go, if we raise Lee up to six, maybe we raise mine up to nine, and let's see how this sounds. Imagine that, us like making film and like doing customer service. That's right. And I feel like I could almost go even more, so I'm going to go up to 12. Imagine that, us like making film and like doing customer service. That's right. And what's interesting about the time in which we worked there is we worked through the Ritz camera bankruptcy. So we watched Ritz camera crumble in for our very us. eyes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think we were to blame for a lot of that. So that's pretty good. Now, what I've also noticed is when you use a compressor, you're taking a signal that's very dynamic and you're pushing it closer together. And... 
what happens is the highs and the loud parts kind of come down, which prevents it from being clipped, but you introduce a lot of noise because any of that quiet sound within your room or from your microphones or from your gain channels will be amplified and you'll start to hear those. So I can actually add a noise reduction clip over here to my final master volume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over here to noise reduction and I'm just gonna go to denoise. I'm gonna set this to default. And now when it gets quiet, especially on my audio, you shouldn't hear nearly as much noise. Sure, we were both working there. Imagine that, us like making film and like doing customer service. That, so I let me turn this on and off and see if you can hear this. This is off. Imagine that, us like making film and like doing customer service. That's and now I if I turn it on. Imagine that, us like making film and like doing customer service. That's right. So you can hear as I toggled that on and off, the noise, denoise really makes a huge difference, especially when using it with a compressor. Now, if you want to get really creative here, you can go back to your compressor and you can start really tweaking like I said, the, the ratios, the attacks, the releases, and you can start playing with the gain. So if you really wanted to make your voice sound a little louder in the mid-tones, you could start bumping up some of these specific regions of the spectrum, and that's why it's going to act kind of like an EQ, because you could decrease the volume of the bass, you could bring up some of the low mids to make that part of the voice a little bit brighter, and then you could take some of the extreme highs and bring those down. And essentially, you're going to be controlling the range of the voice through four different compressors. So really, really powerful. And this can make your audio sound not only more even, but just way more professional. If you want to learn more about filmmaking and learn how to use microphones and capture better audio, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. We've produced a photographer's guide to filmmaking, which is aimed at helping photographers transition from still photographs to producing video content just like this. If this free content is more your thing, subscribe to our channel below so that you can be notified every time we have a new video. We just released this Ritz Camera Chronicle series. People love it. You're definitely going to want to listen to that because it's pretty hilarious. And if you're a photographer or videographer and you just want daily blog content, make sure you head over to fstoppers.com because we produce content like this every single day.